asshole! No, you listen, you little bitch. If you hang up on me again, I'll gut you like a fish, understand? <laughs> yeah. Some kind of joke? More of a game, really. Can you handle that? Bloody. Scream is one of the most influential horror series in modern cinema. But many fans agree that Scream 3 is the weakest entry of the franchise. However, could it have been a different outcome? Hi, I'm Popey JN, this is Beyond the Screen. Today, we're having a look at the original concept of... ...1996 saw horror push back into the forefront of American cinema with the December release of Wes Craven and Kevin Williamson's groundbreaking Scream. We all go a little mad sometimes. <laughs> no, Billy! Fuck! Ah! 1978, Halloween was the slasher icon movie. It spawned a genre, and I think Scream reinvented a genre. Scream managed to gross $173 million off a production budget of $15 million. With the rapid success of Scream in 1996, the studio was keen to capitalize on the momentum. If the first one's successful, the traditional trajectory is you want to make the second one as quickly as possible. We were still in the theaters when we were in prep for the second one. Scream 2 was released in December of 1997 and once again managed to absolutely kill at the box office. Hello? Hello, Sydney. Remember me? What do you want? I want you. It's showtime. Then why don't you show your face, you fucking coward? My pleasure. <laughs> and again managed to duplicate the success of Scream by raking in $172 million off a production budget of $24 million. With two highly successful films in the franchise, a third film was set to be developed only a few short years later. However, there were now a few issues with the production of the film. Kevin Williamson had exploded in popularity since Scream and was now one of the most sought after writers in Hollywood. Kevin was um, distracted. Right now his co-producer, Julie Plack, was my assistant. At a certain point the film was underway. He had to go off and be on his television show. We were sending Julie to be with him to try to get him to write something or take dictation or whatever and we were getting pages from her. However, a draft for Scream 3 was worked out by Williamson and would have taken the characters in a very interesting direction. Kevin wrote a treatment um, and they, they sent me the treatment and uh, there were some, there were a few ideas in it that we all kept uh, and that made their way into Scream 3. Um, but the treatment was very different than um, what the, the movie was. The original plot of Scream 3 was perfectly outlined by Matthew Lillard, who had played Stu Mocker in the original Scream. When being interviewed, he said, I mean, you know, originally I was supposed to be the killer in Scream 3. Did you know oh, that? Oh, I didn't did you know I that, Scream I Daddy? Did I do not think I knew that. <laughs> yeah, Scream 3 um, was originally conceived that Stu was running a collection of kids in high school. Um, they did horrible things. However, just before the production of Scream 3 could commence, this happened. School violence erupted again today, suddenly and with a vengeance. Columbine High in Littleton, Colorado, it has been a horror. As a result of the Columbine shooting, the script was completely disregarded and Aaron Kruger was brought on to write a new screenplay. And about a month before we started production, Columbine High School happened. And in the name of decency, they changed the script. They scrapped the entire thing. However, the subsequent results of the Columbine tragedy also plagued the production further as film studios were now innately conscious of the amount of violence shown on screen. The studios and the MPAA were not going to accept too much gore or violence in movies for the time being. This affected the Scream 3 production as the kills were not allowed to show excessive amounts of blood. 
The bloodiest scene in the movie is now Cotton Weary's death scene at the start of the film where he's thrown to the mercy of Ghostface. The rest of the film wouldn't show large amounts of blood or would try to conceal any blood in the stabbings, making it feel like a B-grade version of that that had come before it. Subsequent fan reactions to the film were mixed upon its release. While it still earned a cold, hard $161 million at the global box office, people weren't thrilled about this being, as Randy put it, You were dealing with the concluding chapter of a trilogy. trilogy. That's right. It's a rarity in the horror field, but it does exist. When Scream 3 was mentioned at a 2016 anniversary panel, Matthew Lillard had this to say about the film. So, um, at the 11th hour, they threw it away and, and went a different way. So what you saw was terrible because people were scrambling to make something. Because what they do is they put a date in the book to make a movie two years down the road. And they have to deliver that movie. So that's what that was. While we never got the version of Scream 3 that Kevin Williamson originally envisioned, it serves as a piece of media that speaks volumes about society at the time of its making. And really, wasn't that what the original Scream was all about and trying to convey? Thank you guys so much for watching. What did you think about the original concept for Scream 3 and what we eventually got instead? Let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to check out more Beyond the Screen episodes in the playlist above, and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. I'll see you in the next one.